the Abrahamic people. People are better not curse you or be in trouble. I always said this means national Israel. Yes, we believe in national Israel. And Joe was agreeing with me on this uh, Arkansas last week. We've under, underdone our own identity. That's very important. First Peter 2 5. You are the princes, you are the royal family. Wow. I think what Michelle, Michelle points out that bothers a lot of people, <clears throat> if I'm wrong, is, is that phrase that God sends a powerful delusion. It's like yes. God's actively participating gotcha. in the down, which is, I don't think. Maybe that's just the translation. It's probably translated different ways. Okay. But I think we're just, it said prior to that, you know, these are people that refuse to love the truth. Actually, they actively involve in not loving the truth. So I think he's response. just turning them over to the consequences of their own sins. Totally right. Mm-hmm. And to that point, we read Romans 2 28. Yeah, please do. Um, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge gotcha. God any longer, right? So that's the decision that's they made. I'm sorry, one, 21, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, Excellent. being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, etc. So it goes on. So it's a consequence in that context. Absolutely right. What we've done here is to string the pearls, right? The art of Bible study is to join the dots correctly. And you're stringing the pearls together, putting it together. God certainly doesn't curse you with blindness for nothing that you've done. That would be Calvinism of the worst type. If you say, I love my family more than I do the truth, watch out. I've seen, I'm seeing this happen even in some leadership where people are getting foggy on the pre mill kingdom. You don't need to do that. They're, they're spinning out of control. There are influences coming from outside saying, uh, you don't want to be part of that little unknown Abrahamic thing. You know, you could be, you could be much more important than that. And I, I see it happening. And my sense is we have to get the back of those people, if that's the right expression. You can't just leave them. I'm wondering what I'm going to do with my former student who now has a translation, our mother. Our mother who art in heaven. Are you headed for the kingdom? Nah, I'm not sure you are. What am I going to do? I don't know. We're not very good at going after people like that. But Dennis's point is right. God does, and to your point, exactly right. The other one is in Matthew 13. The parable of the sower is a refrigerator verse. They found all the time. The parable of the sower, three times on, three times over. It says, because they didn't receive, it's the same idea. It says, if they had accepted the gospel of the kingdom, then God would have blessed them. The opposite is, of course, because they didn't. We have to hang on to that. Otherwise, we become fatalists and Calvinists. Is that the verse there for somebody for me? Matthew 13, 19, around there, sir, everybody. What does he say? In the parable of the sir, right away. Their eyes, their furs. That's what I'm looking for. Somebody find that. We're stringing the pearls now. You've got a Bible study on your hands right here for you, Nicholas, putting these verses together. Matthew 13. Uh, their eyes, they have furs. Where are we? Which verse? 13, Matthew 13. 13. 19. 19. It's about the kingdom. 19. 15. What does it say? Does somebody read 15? What, what is it? I'm sorry. 15. Matthew 13. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Right. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. Boy, right, that's amazing stuff. Did you, did you hear that? Mm. I think it's absolutely staggering. Here's this man sitting in a boat, preaching to people on the, on the bank, on the shore. And it says, they have closed their eyes. He's going from Isaiah 6, which is a standing principle for all prophets. Any preachers will learn this very quickly. <laughs> they have closed their eyes. If they didn't close their eyes, what would happen? Then they could believe in the gospel of the kingdom. And then what would happen? They could repent and be forgiven. Wow! That means you cannot repent and be forgiven until you've got the gospel of the kingdom, doesn't it? I remember I first discovered that many years ago. I was rushing to the bookstores with him. I covered it. That is staggering stuff. No wonder people don't, are not keen on the teaching of Jesus. It makes an intelligent reception of the kingdom of God gospel a condition for repentance, doesn't it? Well, of course, because Jesus begins his ministry by saying, repent and believe in the kingdom. Mark 1, 14 and 15, isn't it? Jesus' opening salvo, his opening preaching, is repent, change your mind, and believe the gospel of the kingdom. 
So no wonder the devil is busy telling you the kingdom is all in your heart, right? John uh, Luke 17, 21. The kingdom is in your heart. That's the only verse they know. I used to talk to the Salvation Army people on, on the tube train going back and forth to the American school where I was teaching languages. And I'd say, I'm writing on the subject. Let me ask you a question. I need to give people their bonnets and their Salvation Army garb. Good people. Everybody's nice, by the way. Most people are nice. They're all nice. So I'd say, I'll ask you a question. We don't talk about the kingdom of God. Oh, the kingdom of God is within you. Instinctively, and I learned the lesson. I thought, this is amazing. That's a false translation, almost certainly. It's the one-off translation, right? They didn't tell me, when you see all these catastrophic things happening in Jerusalem, then you know the kingdom of God is about to come. They didn't tell me, thy kingdom come. They didn't tell me that Joseph of Arimathea was still waiting for the kingdom after the ministry. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. So we found a way for the students on that. The kingdom is firstly, firstly, primarily, foremost, that future thing that's coming. <coughs> and then secondly, you can talk about the kingdom present if you want to. I believe the kingdom is right here now. I think you're the royal family in training. But the kingdom is that stupendous event when God puts an end to the cat catastrophes of the world. Is that right? The balance is there. Jesus seems to be saying, more than that, is saying, unless you believe that, you can't repent. Actually, that makes sense. Unless you believe in the program, how can you join the program? That makes sense. How could Valerie get a job at the hospital if she didn't believe it was a hospital? That's just silly. You have to believe in the program. Then you say yes to the program. Then you're on board. And then we have to argue this this week about salvation is by works or faith. Forget it. Salvation is by the obedience of faith, the obedience of faith, the obedience of faith, the obedience of faith. There's no faith without obedience. There's no obedience without faith in Jesus. I see it. The obedience of faith. You have to do what Jesus says, get it. That's very easy, the obedience of faith. So then somebody said, well, what about baptism? Hmm, let's argue about that. Let's not. I'm tired of it. If Jesus says get baptized, in water, you do it. But if you've come out of certain backgrounds, you've been poisoned by some crook who threw all that into doubt. That might be salvation by works. No. Then is repentance a work? You read that in the books too. Oh no, repentance is work. Don't do that. That's sin. We've made this so difficult. Repent means repent. Get baptized means get baptized. And so I begin to put it this way. There's no commentary on the face of the earth in any language for 2,000 years that even imagines such a thing. But some character comes along who knows nothing about nothing and deceives the minds of these people and we are busy then having to undo all that years later. That's hard work. So, you know, the common sense is common sense. Anybody think that water baptism isn't in the New Testament? Of course it is. Peter commanded us to be baptized. Jesus was baptized. Jesus baptized others. He's 18 spirits at once. It's just part of what you do. But to argue over that is exhausting. The, okay. uh, the principle oh. behind these three texts that we just looked at is huge, but it's so little understood that I think if you uh, ask, if you put it in a, in a quiz form and said, would God ever send a delusion? Most <laughs> people would say no. Right. But it, it's almost as if we have an on Miracles in themselves are not proof of God doing anything. I see that. That's, that is tricky. On the other hand, we don't want to discount miracles. We see one. That's where the uh, speaking I learned, is. I learned a new. Yeah. What was it? Holy, Holy Spirit grenades. Oh, yeah. Oh, Holy Spirit grenades. That's a new one that I learned this week. Some guy throwing Holy yes. Spirit grenades yeah. and everyone toppling down. Oh. I'd like to mention that I've been working a lot. Please. Sure. I've kind of been on both sides of this issue. My father, you know, he was 
always amazed me that God always picks the right person, and who would be the best person to argue against the law than someone that had been so diligent in keeping the law. Uh-huh. You know, one of those three times, and the rest of all those good things we used to do. Yeah, right. That's right. So the egg lady yesterday, so this great lady, diversion here, getting our, our whole wheat eggs. <laughs> homegrown eggs. And wonderful. Well, she's blessing our community with that. Not charging very much. I think you should charge them more. Can we make it proper? Anyway, she's giving the Then she said, do you go to church on Saturday or Sunday? So straight up, she knows I'm involved in the Bible. I said, go on Sunday. Oh, she said, Bill O'Reilly in his book Killing Jesus says the Sabbath is on Saturday. That gets me going. <laughs> and then she said she heard of a relative of hers who's keeping, and, and Saturday is the Sabbath. I went, well, listen to I, I dumped her up. <laughs> I mean, this is life for us, isn't it? We were there 14 years torturing my parents. My dear mother and father put up this brat who was going to go to church on Saturday and wasn't going to go to weddings anymore forever. Come on, buzzard. How stupid were you? The answer is ignorance. So God is merciful because he, he looks at our ignorance. I give you a lot of that. Even Paul said that. I did it in ignorance. But we were wrong. We were flat out wrong, 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 wrong. That's why I recommend you read Eric Chang's book, Fat Book, the first two chapters at least, read it. He says, we were wrong. I was a Trinitarian polytheist. And now he's changed. So I think we've sorted this out, stringing the pearls. It's a great subject, though. Very interesting. OK, where are we now? James Peter. Uh, how do you get the book to stay open, sir? <laughs> We didn't finish. Okay. A lot of verses, I know. I lost track of verse nine. Nine. So then, brothers and sisters, be patient with the Lord's second coming. We've done that, haven't we? Nine, brothers and sisters. Who's going to read that for us? I'll read. Okay, please start. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Mm-hmm. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. Mm-hmm. As an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, mm-hmm. take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As a model of all these three. Okay. In the name of the Lord. Yes. Then, eleven. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. Mm-hmm. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Okay, that's very clear. When's the last time you read the book? Read the book of Job. I have a theory that most church members don't get the Bible much at all. They get bits and pieces. But in a 15-minute sermon, mm-hmm. they might go from 10, 15, 30 years without reading the book of Job. You've got to be reading the book of the Bible, not just one verse. Sit down and read 10 verses of Isaiah. I think you have to get that sort of intensity. Otherwise, you simply aren't aware of Job. Job is fascinating stuff to read, obviously. So are you aware? Could you say, yes, I get it. Job suffered. He suffered miserably. But are you familiar with that? Can you then teach this to your friends? Church of God perhaps has, has been weak in this, what we call sharing the gospel. I don't like that. You're supposed to preach the gospel, not, not share it. Smile. smile. Well, it's nice to smile. <laughs> but it is a heralding of the gospel. Are we at the level of education? Are we really doing that? That's, that's my sense that we aren't really. So we've got to work at being much better. What do you think? God is merciful, compassionate. I wish he'd intervene just like that. More often. That would be very helpful. How about where Peter's mother-in-law has a high fever? Isn't that be great? It's got a temperature of 107. Come on, Peter, just get over here. She's like cooking up something. Oh, I love that. If you're a, an elder in the church, you've got people who are very sick, right? Where is God in this? So I have to say that you're not living in apostolic times. There are no apostles at the level of God. God can do that. <coughs> when somebody lies to you in church, you're, it's unlikely they're going to fall dead at your feet. You with me? When you pray, the house doesn't shake necessarily. Are you failing? Where are the tongues coming out? Of, you know, the flood? You're not living quite in apostolic times. I have to live with that. I notice that when we get to Malachi, there were no more prophets. God closed that camp and did something different. He can do that. Otherwise, I get impatient with God. You know? Come on, Jesus, let's heal this person right now. I want it right now. Can't do that. So I have to accept that. I, have to, I live with that. The opposite, the alternative, 
to be to give up the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I can live with that. Okay, that didn't create any, any uh, difficulties. Are we streaming now, Carl? Not really. Not no. Really. Oh, well. What else you've got here? Any, any other comments? Not to complain against one another. Right. Yes. It should be on my refrigerator. Good one. Don't complain against others. On the other hand, don't pretend that they're all doing fine when they're not. Mm -hmm. Nice balance. Yeah, there. there has to be a balance. There has to be a love of your brother and sister. And you've got to stop him doing what he's doing. Tell him flat out, you are the most blank person I've ever met, whatever it is. If that's what he needs. Is that complaining about it? No, no. Rebuke. Paul, we don't do much of this in the Church of God. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy was a, an apostolic delegate, he wasn't an apostle. Rebuke, because the time is coming when they won't put up the sound doctrine. They just want to have their ears tickled in the feel-good stuff. Then what is the poor leader supposed to do? Just be quiet? No, he's supposed to do something. What do you think? It's a hard balance, isn't it? I think it's when you feel in your heart you're, you're saying bad things about other people you really hate them deep down. Then you're in trouble. If you're saying things where you really want that person to do well, you just can't wait for them to be better, and you see them hurting themselves, then that it must be justified. Well, there's criticism, and then there's constructive criticism. That's right. Constantly. Getting that balance is hard. Constructive. Constructive. I wanted to answer that. I, I looked at the book of Revelation, verse 5, where the five churches out of seven, and all of these comments were on the doing this right. right. Uh, this can't. from the conference, our humorous point, when you ask the guys giving a talk, you say, I like your tie, but... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that clever? Uh, uh, stuck with us all these years. Carl is really wonderful. I like your tie, but... Not! What you said was a bunch of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> We're all, aren't you all using these techniques in the workplace? We all are. People have been in management of any sort. I know you do. Same thing. Then. Yeah. Well, it says the Lord is full of Passion and yeah. mercy. That yeah. contrast that with him sending the powerful delusions, which really, yeah. as we said, the powerful delusions is we're being uh, subject to the consequences of our own sin. Exactly. He's full of compassion and mercy. And when we talk to the two two thousand years that we waited two thousand years, as we know, we really haven't waited two thousand years. We really only wait as long as we live. Yeah. And we are that's what we persevere <laughs> through. Whether that's sixty three years, seventy three years, ninety three years, that's what we have to persevere through, and that's where we have to keep the faith. In that's right. Millie taught you well then. That, that's a, a reference to, he gave up the faith talk last conference. Remember that? Some of you heard that. Where he celebrated an Abrahamic teacher. I thought it was just wonderful. Because that Sunday school teaching is so important. It's it really forming your thinking for the rest of your life. Okay. So then, above all, my, mother, my brothers and sisters, don't swear. Okay, don't swear. I, I do go on about this. Let's quit this oh my G-O-D stuff. Or even, oh my G O S H. Let's not do that. It's not any of it. It's hard to get people to change on something like that. Even we have to be willing to change those things. So language should be, especially I think if you're teaching a bit of your your language should be accurate, not sloppy. We should teach our, our elders and pastors to to speak reasonably well. This doesn't seem like it's just a matter of grammar. I mean, right. It's so that you won't fall under judgment. Of course. I mean, that's kind of severe. Of course. So self-criticism is, is obviously the way to go there. We haven't actually read through the rest. Do you want us to go around and read through? Yes, yeah, please. Let, let's read the rest of it right down to the end, then we'll see if there are any more comments. We've, we've done a lot of commenting today. Mm -hmm. Who's going to read the next verse? Just me. Is it 12 or 13? 12. 12? Above all, my brothers, do not swear not by heaven or by earth mm -hmm. or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no, no, mm -hmm. or you will be condemned. Okay. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Mm -hmm. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing <coughs> him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
and that the prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. 14. 16. Oh, sorry. Uh, how about rebellion? Uh, back. Are you in 16? Did you do that? Therefore. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Yeah. 17. Is it me? Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. For a period of three years and six months, it did not rain on the land. Oh, sorry, that's confused. And he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Yep. My dear brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back again, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death yeah. and will cover a multitude of sins. Problem. Here's a reference to the verse. Do, how much do we do with that verse? Yeah. We don't do this very well. Are we going after, and I won't list the names publicly, but I can think of 50 folk who are absolutely with us, who are nothing now, they've just faded out. I don't know. We try sometimes, it doesn't work, and we give up. But, uh, that's, that's tough. My brothers and sisters in, in 18, if any among you strays from the truth, begins to say, well, I'm not sure about this pre-mill kingdom. <coughs> uh, you know, maybe the A-mills are right, that the kingdom of God is essentially now bad sign. They're being influenced from, uh, there are some in our own group who have gone in this direction. We cannot just sit still. Uh, there are some taunting us out from outside the movement saying, well, Anthony and Joe, you'll get this trend of things pretty straight after a while, you'll understand it, it's in time. I'm a bit like an Asian says this Church of God first and foremost. And when he, he's the pastor of the Church of God, and when he became a Trinitarian, five or six of his members got up and walked out. Others stayed there. I would want to say to them, wait a minute, what are you doing? Your pastor now believes that God is free. That's not your tradition. Are we going to say nothing? I think we have to very gently go after this. Otherwise we might be guilty of not doing what James says to us. Strays from the truth, someone turns him back and says, I'm sure the criterion is if you want the best of this person, right? If you're doing it out of just malice or winning an argument, heaven forbid, but if you really want your brother and sister to do well, you know that what they're doing or saying, is doing them all kinds of damage, and you're going to try to, to get that <coughs> straight out. Not on every hair of doctrine. I mean, let's take this example. Okay, we can't have some interest in the British Israel thing. Wonderful. Are we going to argue about that, fight about it? Of course not. Are we going to condemn No, of course not. If that's your interest, explore it. Wonderful. In the end, it doesn't make too much difference. The, the issue is, you know, who are you in Christ? But we should allow for each other to have different views. On the other hand, we had a man who from Canada who insisted that the, the, the two witnesses were this, that, and the other, and that was all he did. Give him a, a, a forum, and all he did was the two witnesses are, oh, you're all the two, and all, and, it, and it, that's boring, that gets tiring after a while. So, but we must be able to handle the differences of this, uh, uh, reasonable things to discuss. Yeah. People are frightfully nervous, by the way. You think, if I'm going to disagree with somebody else on half a Greek word, relax. <laughs> relax a little bit. You know. On the other hand, there's a uh, a limit to which we can allow people <coughs> to give up on believing in one God? I mean, that's really insulting to us because we could have stayed right there in the Baptist church. Let me ask it. <coughs> Let's just say Valerie here sees that I, I am mistaken on the interpretation of one verse. Should she, should she diligently work hard to turn me back? Or I get it. Like, <coughs> Where's the balance in this whole thing? Do we, we depend on that? Well, we, well, yeah. Like well, I know. I'm just. Not, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have mine. Like, like I, we, you could, we could appear to be very harassing of people if we want to strike them on a every totally single dot totally in the agree. eye. And Absolutely. I, and I don't. Absolutely. Um, but on the other hand, like the, the pendulum should swing the other thing. We're just. Well, I'm not going to judge anybody, and so sure. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, exactly. So, can, can we can we discuss maybe a practical way of what is what is a, a reasonable way to, right. to, to be faithful to this oh, yeah, yeah. without yeah. Um, you know yeah. be, being the theology? Oh, case. absolutely. And that, that's wisdom. I mean, I hope I haven't exposed you. I mean, I talk about you. 
one here. It's not an obsession with you in any way. It's a totally valid thing. Maybe we are into it. doesn't matter to me particularly because it's not the issue, right? We have too many other things we're talking about. No, it's got to be reasonable. But I think Crawford gives us great wisdom yes, in this absolutely. category. Right. And I, ha I have difficulty with people attending a non-church of God with no, with no compunction at all. I mean, I, I run into this all the time. Well, there's no church of God personally now, the lady said, last week, and so now we're going to the Baptist church. And actually, I'm, I'm troubled because my children now believe in going to heaven and they've got an affinity. What am I supposed to do? I, I'm, I have to, you have to strain me. I feel like, <laughs> come on, <laughs> stop it. Of course, I don't, I, 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 you know, congregations are described as sheep. I think we are sheep. You know, we're obviously stupid. <laughs> it's more honest, I think. Although you could argue, well, I'm making friends. We have a dear lady coming from the conference, a wonderful person. Uh, and she's dialoguing, if that's the right word, with the pastor and, on the Trinity, right? And deep down in me, I, I think she'll probably get kicked out eventually. But I'm not going to push that. Let her keep talking. I've got a group who are going to a Church of Christ now. These are things, unfortunately, that come by our email every day. That's why I'm so obsessed with them. And this one family has found a church where they're non creedal That means to say they're not going to fuss about the Trinity. They're not non trinitarians but they're not going to fight over it because their founders, Church of Christ in this case, were non trinitarians both of them. So in that, in that tradition, there's an, an easiness on that. So they're going there because they want friends for their children. And so I said to this person the other day, you do know these people don't believe in the creedal kingdom. She had no idea. My only point is, please bother to find out what this group believes. Isn't that really important? You know, at least engage your mind. It doesn't mean you have to hate them or curse them, but you might bother to find out what the pastor does believe or doesn't believe. Something like that. These are pressing issues, as Dustin knows, with coming to Minister's Conference this week, in which some of these things are going to be addressed. I just want to let you know that for the first time all day long, we are finally streaming. Oh, <laughs> so, no, no, I'm only saying that because in our time left, this is really yes. the rest of this is really important, Bobby, Absolutely. probably to a lot of people about Absolutely. anointing and right. sickness and so on. I just, I just don't want us to like rush through that in three seconds because finally people they'll get at least a good chunk Absolutely. of it something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do this all over. In and out all day. No, no, no. I'm just saying. So it's any among you suffering. I mean, this is clear. Are you suffering? I've been suffering some physical pain. I've never had that in my life over the last month. It's a really a new thing, you know? You think, how do I deal with this? Come on, Jesus, get up here, anoint me, and I'm up and go. Didn't work that way. So now I'm going into the tomb, you know, and I've got these miserable people, these <laughs> wonderful doctors. It's a new experience to me. I'm thinking, how does this work? I don't, I don't claim to know. I don't fully understand what James says here. He's obviously expects people to be, to be healed when, when they're sick. And, I'm sure that's entirely possible. I can think of some miracles. I can think of where Heather had her hand in a car door and it was slammed flat out. And her hand is not there. I saw that. That was extraordinary. I think that was an absolute miracle. I don't see that happening yesterday, every day. Although, at a, another level, I believe miracles happen in church. I believe today we strongly pull the brother well on that. I think the Spirit is moving among us and God is, is guiding us, not infallibly, something like that. So I believe in miracles. But I'm not also prepared to believe that if you go blah, 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 and you've never known what you said, nobody's ever recognized the language, and then you're going to tell me that I'm not, I haven't got the spirit because I'm not doing it. 
then I get defensive. So it's all a set of balance. Okay, so let's do something with this thing. Is anybody suffering? He should pray. Do you need a lecture on that? I don't think so. You do. You pray for yourself when you say, I hope you do, not just others. You pray, you call on God, and absolutely David did. And he was in some desperation sometimes that God didn't answer the prayers flat out like that. So you pray. <coughs> if you're cheerful, singing praises. Of course, if you're in the Church of Christ, you mustn't have an instrument in the church. I came all the way from Chile to tell us in Peru, the English paper in Spanish, and you would read it. I have to pull out my big patience thing. <laughs> <laughs> Argue with me that you shouldn't have a piano in church. It doesn't get off the ground. The Greek word psalo is to pluck. That's what you do, sing psalms. Oh, well, but you're supposed to do that with your voice and not an instrument. I, I find it very difficult to be patient with that. Now, this person is very sweet and nice. He's very just, no, thank you for reading all that. No, I haven't, I haven't got time. I cannot, I cannot deal with that. I can't get off the ground now. Okay, so be patient. And singing praises, play your instrument you want to, singing praises. I, I had a success, I think, with Sean, who was not brought up in the classical music, and I'm not saying classical music is the end of all, it's not. But I suggested to Sean that he get his children into the Handel's Messiah, Elijah's, uh, the Mendelssohn Elijah, and even the John and the, and the Matthew Passion. And he took this advice, and he's driving 200 miles to hear the Matthew Passion. Can't believe this. It's, you know, it's nothing. But he was interested in that. I think it has a humanizing, cultivating effect on people. That, that's my belief. Does it mean it's going to prevail in the millennium? No, I'm not here. No, I just don't Anyway, Sean did that. It's best part. So sing like crazy. Whether you can sing or not, <coughs> sing praises. If you're sick, I take this as the asthenia is the normal way to be sick. It certainly would include all kinds of sickness, but it don't think it includes sickness. It obviously has nothing to do with sickness. I, 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 that's, me, I that. To me, that's not a problem. So you should then summon the elders. We don't have too many elders. Summon each other, whatever we can do. Um, but we should do that. I, I don't know whether, Dennis, you've seen much of this done over the years, or what, what is your reaction? I've seen a, a lot of it done, yeah. uh, as far as anointing with oil. But uh, you know, we certainly pray. That's it. Pray for the sick. We will. When people are baptized, or even when they take a church office, I think, I think we're doing okay on that. I, I really do. It sounds, James seems to see this as, you know, snap your fingers, lay hands, and this person is up and running about. It sounds a bit easy, although Epaphroditus was left sick by Paul. So Paul couldn't magically touch people. On the other hand, on the island of Malta, the whole lot came out to get healed. And one of these Roman officials' father had dysentery. Paul went in there. Heal it. I love it. Come on, Paul. I'd love, I'd love to see you run. We don't have a parcel like the twelve. We don't. You can have a parcel in a second. I wouldn't even use the word because it's been served you. But you don't have the twelve now because they were not repeated. You haven't seen Jesus literally. He doesn't show up. You don't have the accrediting signs and wonders of the parcel. So that's it. So we do what we can. Let's keep doing the anointing. Certainly, I know a lot of you pray a lot. I think that's one very comforting to know that people are praying for you. So, I think we're being okay there. What else do we want to say about that? In the fifth chapter, then, what else happens after the prayer? Um, I have a yeah. Mark 6.13 that the apostles yes. anointed the sick. Good point. If anybody wants to That's pray. exactly right. There is anointing with oil and healing in Mark 6. The only other reference, I think, to anointing. So they were certainly sent out to heal. The 70 were sent out to heal and preach, and the 12 were sent out to heal and preach. I don't feel that I have the authority to raise the dead. And people say, oh, you raise your faith. Wait a minute. If God wants me to raise the dead, I think he'll make that clear to me. I think he can do that. It's not a lack of faith. I've got perfect I can, I'm absolutely convinced that God could take any of your hands and raise the dead. That's not a problem. You can create the universe. Raising the dead is nothing. It's not a lack of faith. I just don't feel that God is expecting us to go and do that. I talked to a man who's complaining about the gifts of healings the other day. And I said, well, okay, you have the gift of healing. Do you think you have? Yeah, I think I do. So how many dead have you raised? He said, well, I did go to a coffin in a, in a, in a, at a funeral. And I almost.
almost ready for death. That could be dishonesty. I'm against dishonesty. For goodness sake, be real. When you've gone blah, 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 blah for several years and you're in a closet and you know, know, know what you said, you have absolutely no proof that you're speaking like, at least be careful. You could be into monstrous self-deception. And that's what I'm saying. So, Anthony, I think you made a point that I just want to overemphasize. I mean, I heard it and I know everybody else probably heard it. Um, but if God wants you to do something, he will absolutely make it clear to you yes. what it is that yes. he will have you do. Because yes. we have to remember the sure. source is God, and anything that God wants us to carry out for his will and purposes, he's going to let us sure. know. He, it, it's Absolutely. not going to be guesswork. And it it's going to be crystal clear, crystal. and God operates within each of us, yes. and we know how to sure. recognize when God sure. is operating in us, and what it is that we're to do. But I just, yeah. that is so key. It's very key. Is you, you've got to recognize right. when God, you're walking by the Spirit, right. you are being energized right. by God to do what it is that you're sure. called to do by God, and just remembering that the source is God. It is not us. We are just the workmen, right? We're sure. just the, yeah. the, the legs and the arms um, yes, that are in the indeed. physical no, realm cool. carrying out spiritual things. Yeah, cool. I think none of us is silly enough thinking we can raise the dead. <laughs> I said nothing again. Okay. I, I agree with you entirely. God has to make it more or less clear to you what you're supposed to do. Right. I think that's and kind of if you come along and say you raised Somebody's dead. I'm not going to question. I'm not. That's a bit of, it's a matter of being, being honest, you know, and straightforward. I think the good adjunct to that too is that you don't need the guy up in the pulpit to tell you what God That's wants you right. to do. I don't need somebody to tell me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it is my that same spirit dwells within me. Right. <laughs> well, and going back to something you said earlier, but in a different context, you have to listen. Yes. We have to listen. Someone could. Yeah, telling you something, and we're really good at not listening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, fear, disobedience, all of those yes. things. Yes, uh, yeah, I've, I've said that for myself. It's I said, don't it's convenient. Right, your wife, your, best <coughs> friend, right? your wife is a very good critic, not invalid, so you listen carefully. If your friends <coughs> constantly say you talk too much or talk too little, you might want to listen, but people don't. <coughs> if you have a reputation for this or that or the other, either good or bad, you might pay attention to that possibly, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Otherwise, how can God speak to you? But that's yeah, a great point. We do have to listen. I mean, we're, we're very, quote, charismatic. I really believe God speaks to us in the morning, particularly. Not every day. But I get a very strong feeling that the stuff that we should be doing. I, I'm feeling right now, the church of God needs to think about what we do in the kingdom, not just sit there and gaze in the sky. We haven't done that component well. So texts like, we'll have power over the nations to rule them with a rod of iron. How many sermons have you had on that? Not nil. Why not? <coughs> That's all part of Scripture. So I'm, I'm feeling a very strong sense we need to do that component of the kingdom of God, and we haven't done that very well. So yes, we have to listen. Absolutely right. Okay, Elijah then. Oh, confess your sins. Yeah, verse yeah, 16. Up to a point, confess your sins. Yeah, confess your sins. Up to a point, though, the Oxford movement you know, had these great meetings where they confessed their innermost awful sins in public all the time. That's not you don't want to come to church and have people tell you all the awful things they've done. That's out of the question. There is some level here that will work. But don't make the mistake of thinking you have to tell the whole of the public what you've done. That is not what he obviously means. But it, it might be in connection with the sickness here. He, he obviously says, in connection with the sickness, you've got this idea that if sins have been committed, if they have done say they have, then that takes you back to Matthew 8, 17, where Jesus died and took our sins on the cross, before the cross. How does that work? So why am I suffering pain if Jesus took it on the cross? You work that out. It doesn't mean you don't suffer any pain. But ultimately he took this. You can't snap your fingers and say, Jesus, you took the pain, so I didn't have any pain. That can't be right because obviously people still suffer. Look at Paul. Paul could say, Jesus, you got killed for the faith. Why am I having my head chopped off by Rome? I'm not enjoying this. So there's some sort of balance to it. It wasn't all taken on the cross by Jesus in our place. Although ultimately, At the end of the day, it is. Yeah. Our sins have to be forgiven. And I insist on the substitutionary atonement of Jesus. Some of the Sicinians, people who believe in the one God and the one Jesus, we do gave that, gave that up. They said, no, 
gives them willing to die for your sins, because God is forgives unconditionally. That's all. Yes, he does forgive unconditionally. They still have to repent. Remember that? People still have to repent, don't they? How come? If God just forgives them all anyway, why do they have to repent? Because we still have to. I see that. We have to, we have to do something. Okay, so Elijah then, he was the guy who had an interesting episode with an identity contest. Remember? Who is the true God? Baal or the one true God? An identity contest. And all the false prophets were out there, and all the true prophets were there. And God, I wish God would do more of it. It'd be fun if he did it more, obviously, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it? It would be actually terrifying, probably. I don't think he's operating quite like this. I haven't seen it. But there was a big show. And you know the story. It's a marvelous story. Elijah was a prophet. I see that. Among many good prophets. And so he was a man with a. I like that. He was a nature like that. He got up in the morning, went to the bathroom. I think of that. <laughs> he had his breakfast, right? He had his, his trouble, you know, with family and whatever. God is not using super people who are perfectly sinless. I can see that. But he was certainly tremendously important. Have you thought of that? How important is somebody like David? Was David any different from any other human being? In one sense, no. What about Paul who wrote these letters? We're pouring over. Isn't that amazing? He'd be amazed, wouldn't he? The Bible, you know, is the most popular book in the world by far. More billions and billions and billions of copies of the Bible have been sold than any other book. People are, uh, don't read it much, but they've got it, they tell me. How important was Paul? I can have that. David, there's a place in David where David realized that God had made him king of Israel. It, it went on, oh, I, I get it. I, I'm supposed to do this work. So we all do our various works that God has appointed for us. Elijah was very, very important. Pray that it wouldn't rain. Can you pray for the rain to come and it's going to work? I don't claim that. I, I don't think I can. How about Bob down there? Do you pray for rain? <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> Elijah did. That's great. Three and a half years, that's hard. That's a tight turn of that seven year period here. Three and a half years is the bad time of the Antichrist. Three and a half years, the 70th week of the Antichrist. Look at you, and there's a type there, three and a half year period apparently. And then he prayed again. Guess what? The sky gave rain, and the land produced its fruit. This all sounds very easy, doesn't it? I believe it. God can still do it if He wants to, or He might want to leave the paradise sick and not heal. I, you know, I, I don't know. He's talking about our friends here. Yeah, because there are yeah. some people yeah. who think that. If you are sick, it's because you have sinned. Yeah. That's and true. that's kind of, uh, yeah, maybe, but we've all sinned. And, um, but, you know, we, we know someone who is dealing with sure. this big time. Well, you notice that James said, if he's committed sin. He didn't say he obviously has committed sin. Sins have com been committed from Adam on, I can see that. But he does say carefully, if, and then you've got the passage in First Corinthians 11, where Paul says, some of you are dead. And some of you are very sick because you're not doing the Lord's Supper properly. That's challenging. Now, I don't think it's quite applicable to us. Instead, I don't know of any of you getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. <laughs> oh, oh, greedy, you know. They were really out of control, this group. And therefore, some of you are sick in the church. Paul said, some of you are dead. Wow. Well, that's God judging right there. That's Ananias and Sapphira dying at the feet of the apostle. We're not working in that kind of way. <coughs> So what can you do? Examine yourself. You know, why, why am I getting these pains? What if I, uh, maybe he's too stressed out. I need to relax. I need to keep the Sabbath. I don't know what it is. What am I supposed to do? And then you go and listen to all the advice you can possibly get. And maybe we're wrong. We should be keeping the Sabbath. There you go. Let's not be what, we'll all be well. What about those? Christ, death and flesh and body. That means everything. But the church in Thyatira, where you've got yes. prophetess who's yeah. leading people yeah. in immorality and eating things, sacrificed to idols. Yeah. And her, the punishment is that he's going to throw her on a bed of sickness. Good point. Okay? Great. In a lot of places to where sickness, or, mm -hmm. or even ultimately death, is a punishment <laughs> for people's sins. I think an opposite yeah. thing would be in that, Bible, well, I've got all these bad things happening, you know, I'm sick and stuff like that. You immediately run up to the doctor. But we don't stop and think, maybe it's a consequence for our sin. We don't examine ourselves. And so that's why he's saying, hey, Confess your sins, because maybe 
Maybe that is it. Sounds we don't even think about it. We don't even. Very it's, it's off the radar. It's a very good parallel there. And I don't claim, and none of us does, to be able to pronounce in every case well, how that's that the thing too. It's it's. Um, but we we'll work at it, you know. But I. I, I hate to you know. Can all confess my sin here, right? <laughs> I, I hate to, to when I when I look at someone and I see man all these terrible things are happening then well gosh it, maybe maybe it's because of all these sins because I'm alerted to this right here but I think oh, I can never say that it's certainly not politically correct but I but I the thought has crossed my mind before no I, I think we all have my selfish way and the famous phrase struggle with those things no I mean it's obvious to those of us who come from abroad that America has a food problem put it that way it's obvious. Perfect government. My grandfather, who must have known something, the vision of King George V and VI, he said, Father, but human rights, we're eating too much. We're killing us. Prevention is the answer, he said. In his wisdom or lack of wisdom. It's obvious. obvious. Perfectly obvious. All right, go into these restaurants and say, cut those portions in half. They won't do it. But in the kingdom, you will do that. Don't kill yourself by being overweight. You can't say that. That's not really correct. Very dangerous. But you are, this nation, we are, is a medicine-taking nation. Now, that's obviously right and excellent in some ways. But I seem to hear these stories all the time. My well, grandmother was on 15 prescription pills. We took her off the whole lot. Guess what? She's been fine. I mean, that's an extreme example. I'm not, I'm, I am not an expert here. I shouldn't say those things. But there's some truth in that, right, isn't it? I, I think this bites at our heel in so many different levels. Yeah. From a personal angle, that type of thing, and... Um, the notion of the when it says that you should persevere, I think we also have to be vigilant, and that comes back to Justin. With you know, you wonder why something is, yes. you know, why are you being plagued with something? Let me examine it. But then, even taking it to a broader level, when you look, when you talk um, briefly about the persecution of Christians, for instance, yes. When do we most readily and easily um, deceive? or overtaken when we're distracted. Um, even from like safety analysis and safety numbers and police and everything will say that if you're walking through the dark through a parking lot at night and you're alone, don't be on your cell phone. Don't be jangling around like you've got no cares in the world. Be focused. You don't look like an attractive target. Exactly. And I think we're, we can be deceived on, back on the global and persecution of Christians. How do they get our attention and how do they distract us and how do they get in our face immediately and cause us fear? They go to the extreme. They do horrendous things that many of us would never think of. Yeah. And then we're distracted. And yes. then we're off base. We're off guard. <coughs> and, and it just it just circles at so oh, many yeah. different levels. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Satan is very smart. I mean, he obviously understands the human psyche well. I think he plays so. on the, I, 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 being a language person, I'm heavy <laughs> on these languages. And you mentioned David, and I mean, it goes, yeah, it goes everywhere. Yes, yes obviously. Yeah. And distraction. Obviously, if you don't want people to pay attention to the things that matter, you get them distracted. I, my complaint, if, if that's right, would be the church got people not educated. They are not digging into the history of this incredible movement. They're not. They're sitting there in church and they're going through the summer. This is a generalization. Could we not get them to read Eric Chang's book? Or even, dare I say, Alexander Reese's approaching Advent the Christ, the best thing written on the second coming by far. It's a real book, but it's a marvelous thing. It's, a, it's a, not an impossible read. But he set out to discover the end times, and I think he worked it very well. He has one statement here which really appeals to me. I just want to read this to you. When therefore someone has a freak interpretation to recommend to us, I like a freak. Like, world baptism doesn't matter. Freak. Nobody thought of that bar. Nobody in 2,000 years of conflict. That's incredible. The Quakers, yes, I, I see that. But that's an easy thing. Don't come up with an idea that, that, that water baptism doesn't matter. When I get a freak interpretation, I have drawn on the what he calls the great exegetes to give us their view of it, trusting that the average educated reader will see that a natural interpretation, so sort of plain on the surface one is normally right. If it says that the dead were, they died by having heads chopped off and others marched, then they came to life and began to reign for a thousand years, and then it says the devil is in the abyss for a thousand years from that point on, it doesn't suggest to me that the devil is already in the abyss now. But the other church, text in 12, 9 says, 
who doesn't see any time for us. Can you imagine that? We have some in our leadership who are shaky in that area now. That's, the, that's very bad. It suggests that they're falling out of the circle. So a freak interpretation, you don't want to go there. Do the one that's backed by scholars of the highest standing. I know that's a generalization. Is preferable, he says, to a freak one backed by dogmatism and the requirements of the system. Like, we don't believe instruments are genuine. You're sinning if you have instruments in church. That is so freak, it's unbearable. It's so freak. That's a whole denomination. So, it's hardly a prime time thing, yeah. Okay, so then, my brothers and sisters, finally, then he prayed and the rain came. I get it. If any among you strays from the truth, this is what we're talking about. Isn't it? If we suddenly hear that now we now decides that God is non existent, we're going to come up here. I'm going to hear that. <laughs> So you might say to your friends, please make me accountable. I want to be accountable. Especially the young ones. Especially the young ones. I'm so senile now, now. But listen, if you've been around for 80 years, you're likely to have seen stuff that others have not seen. Possible. It's possible. <laughs> so I look back at my youth and I think, <laughs> was this idiot stupid or what? It's going on about the Armstrong, keeping the Sabbath, torturing my parents who love, love us to death, love me to death. Pretty bad. And we did it in God forgave us. But let's reckon with our youthfulness, perhaps. And you know, take that as a, as a, into account. Well, what can you do? Does this make sense, Dennis? I'm talking about the season, you know. You've dealt with people over the years. Is, is there some sense in that? Well, I, for those who don't know, I stumbled into the Church of God when I was 12 years old, and I've, I've been there ever since. So when I'm around Anthony, Yes. I, I feel like I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I cheated because yeah. I was pretty much, you know, 12 years old, I was pretty much raised in it, but I was <coughs> really the fortunate recipient yes. uh, of many good teachers. Yes. You know, and I've tried in turn to return that by, okay. by teaching my heart. <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, there's certainly no substitute for uh, as this verse describes for, for people who yeah. will take an interest We live out there. The phone rings every three weeks now, roughly. And some lady is saying from Scotland, she's a Catholic, and she's a JW, especially the JW, is a great prize when they come. Uh, and, and they're saying, when well, the nun was drawing the immortal soul on the board, or the nun was trying to draw the Trinity on the, back, on the background, I, and I was 10 years old at the time, or I was 12 years old, I wasn't getting it. Well, 30 years later, she finds, let's say, a church of God website, right? And then she's ecstatic. Well, our friends are out there. I mean, not only born and bred church of God, they're, they're wonderful too. But these people are amazing because they're coming out of the wackiest stuff. And when you tell them God is one, Jesus is the Messiah, and you tell them that the pre existence of Jesus is a nonsense term, don't argue that with your JW friends. What do you mean? Pre How do you pre exist yourself? How can you be before you are? It's all nonsense. I'm thinking, my goodness, what are you saying to be honest about me? Then you meet people like Dennis who learned this, you know, years before from Millie. If this isn't true, nothing is true. If the millennium is not a thousand years beyond the second coming, as Henry Orford said so beautifully, one of the great giants of evangelical scholarship, said, if the thousand years is not future, preceded by the resurrection, then scripture is wiped out as a testimony to anything. Powerful. Okay, so uh, how are we doing stream-wise? Um, we've been pretty much on ever so since. Any I've comments been. from our friends out there? Uh, we're just listening. Just listening. <laughs> I'm speechless. I don't know. Time to wrap up. Like, time to wrap up. Did you say you yeah, wanted to do uh, First Peter after this? Would, would that be okay? Last I'd love to. That's what you meant. I just, I, I, I'm I'd like to read ahead, so I'm right, prepared. Right, right. Let's let's go next time we we meet together, which will be next week. Let's, let's That's go. Okay. Let's do First Peter because yeah. I, I have special yeah. honor to confess to. Yeah. 2529, you're the special people. You're the kings and the priests. Don't give your identity away to an unconverted Jew. Don't do that. You are God's special people. Right? Yes, there's a future for nationalism. We can do all of that stuff as well. That's wonderful. Okay, we're going to sing a hymn and we'll ask maybe Dustin to close in prayer. Would that be okay at the end, please? And 
sing our closing hymn. Jerry is in the choir loft up there. Central <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> choir loft built specially for church. How about some music? <laughs> And then we're going to have a meal together here, so don't, don't rush And off. actually, while we're packing this up, we have two birthdays to acknowledge. Wow. Mm -hmm. two. We, we, we won't make our birthday boys get up there in front of everybody and you know, okay. sing happy birthday to themselves. But maybe Who's the second one? I knew about we have <laughs> Dustin <laughs> and Vince having Dustin. birthdays. What's it like to be 25, Dustin? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know yet. <laughs> yeah. I always to be the older woman. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah. I think an acknowledgement of our good young friends. Well behaved, what do you think? Friends and parents too. This is all the copies I have. Do you want to come and see the best? We can share if you need. Yeah, you two can share. share. Can share. Yeah. Tom, do you want one? There's an extra. Okay. Okay. It's page two in the hymnal. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. It, it might on, on the computer. It might be praise ye the Lord. Yes, right here. I'm from him. I'm from him. Okay, off we go. We ready? Yes, I think we are. Father, we worship and praise you as the true God the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, we thank you for uh, the opportunity we have to come on this beautiful day uh, to take the study, uh, the talk, and uh, just look into your scriptures 